Hey folks, I want to cover how to recreate this kind of effect. Um, I did a video on something similar a while back, uh, but it was kind of a basic version of the setup and I just wanted to refine it a little more. So this is kind of a continuation uh, of that one. So the setup will be pretty similar, but um, yeah, let's uh, let's get into Houdini and get started. So let's jump into the geo container. Um, <coughs> we're going to start with the helix. And one thing that I learned works better with uh, this setup and getting the detail out of the pyro system that we need is uh, working at a larger scale. Um, so working at a large scale uh, produced a lot better results for me um, when I was recreating this effect. I was, I think, initially working, you know, at uh, a smaller scale, you know, something around where the viewport usually starts at, but I got better results um, increasing the scale quite a bit. So <clears throat> the helix height that I started with is 100, um, and then we just need to tweak it a little bit um, to look the way we want it to, essentially. Um, so I don't know, uh, something like that is fine. We don't need a ton of turns. And then what we're going to do is next use the copy and transform, um, to create, uh, three of these and rotate them. Maybe something like that. So we have three paths that our, uh, our emitters will follow. And then what we're going to do is add a carve node. And we need it not to be set to the first uh, U, but the second U. So like this. So our emitters will follow that path up. And then we need to copy our emitter uh, geometry to those points. So we're going to use a sphere and um, we need to select these or create a point selection for those. Um, so we're going to use a group expression and we're going to set it to points and we're going to use the um, first point of primitive option preset. And we will call this uh, group copy. And you can see it is giving us uh, the wrong um, the wrong point. We need the ones up here so we can um, we can address that with a reverse. Just reverse the direction. And then, yeah, you can see our points are right where we need them to be. Then we can use a copy to points to copy our spheres onto those points. Whoops. And then we need to set the target points to copy. And then as we you animate our carve, uh, our carve uh, sop, um, we get these, um, these uh, spheres, which will be our emitters moving along in space, which is exactly what we need them to do. Um, if you if you go to zero, you can see there's the 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 spheres disappear. Um, so it just needs to be at a value that's slightly above zero. Um, we can use uh, an expression to animate this. So let's fit uh, this. Yeah. So let's fit dollar f from zero to 300 to zero and one. And we'll 
make this a slightly uh, value slightly above zero and then this should animate from the start to the end in 300 frames. Cool. That works so we can just adjust these values if we uh, if we wanted to go faster or slower. So 200 now it's going to be going uh, all the way along the the curve in 200 frames. Um, so that's kind of our basic setup. I think we'll stick with 300. We need, want these to go a little bit slower. And then we have our um, our setup for the emitters. Um, and so what we can then do is use a pyro source node here. Actually, what we're going to do, um, you can see with the pyro source node, it's creating points uh, scattered along the surface of the uh, geometry, but we, we want uh, points throughout. So instead of copying the sphere, we're going to uh, copy the points from volume from a sphere. So now you can see um, we have points throughout our, our spheres that are getting copied and moving along. Um, so uh, we need to initialize uh, source smoke. That'll create a, ten a density and temperature app attributes for us. Um, and then we need to turn these attributes into volumes. That, uh, so on the pyro source node, these are point attributes that have been created, density and temperature. And then uh, for the pyro solver to work, it needs these as volumes. So that's what the volume rasterize uh, attributes does, is it takes whatever attributes you tell it to and turns them into volumes. So when we look at the information of this, now we don't have the point attributes density and temperature, but we have volumes density and temperature now, which is exactly what we need for the, um, for the pyro solver, which is our next node. So now we have our pyro solver. Um, and if we play it, let's see what we get. So you can see, you know, it's working pretty much how we would anticipate it with the default pyro settings. Um, and we need to tweak them to create the look that we want. And we also need to add a collision. So what we're going to add is just a tube that is going straight up um, that will be our collider, our container kind of for this uh, simulation. So what we can do is grab the copy parameter from the height of the uh, helix and paste that relative reference here and then copy this parameter here, paste it again to the center, and divide it by two. So that way it's always going to be at the ground level and the same height as the helix uh, because this is obviously the same height we copied over and then it, this expression is telling it to move up the base of the tube by half of the height, whatever the height value is. So if the height value changes, this will uh, update as well. So that's set up and then we need to change the radius to kind of uh, um, be wider than the, the track that we've created a little bit as well. Um, and then we want a good amount of uh, of uh, segments on our um, on our tube as well. We don't need these right now, but we will eventually. So um, end caps we can check on to create a cap at the at the top and bottom, and then we have our we should have our collision geometry. Um, this. Uh, Pyro Solver has some, the SOP level one has some quick setups, so we can set up an SDF collision. And essentially, we just need to plug in our tube into this VDB from polygons. And uh, 
we can do that you know ourselves as well but this creates you know the settings uh that that we need um yeah and this also includes like if there is a uh velocity attribute but we don't have that so we don't need to worry about that um right now so now that we have the collision in there the sh simulation should also be colliding with that tube which it looks like it is but we need to change some stuff to make it you know let, so we can just see what's happening a little bit better and also get a better sense of what is going on um so where we're going to go next is the fields. Um, we don't want any dissipation. So dissipation means smoke uh, density, uh, de the density value declining over time. So we lose smoke over time. So we don't want that. Um, we want all the smoke that's created to stick around. And then uh, under the shape, we, uh, we, we want buoyancy. So buoyancy is essentially... Uh, telling the smoke which direction to go and by default it's going upward I believe which is a little confusing or counterintuitive because this value is set to negative one so you would think okay maybe that's pointing down but um, if we invert that you can see that the smoke should go uh, down the way we would think down is um, so there we've got that. Um, one thing that I think we need to do here is in our tube, let's uh, probably extrude this tube a bit and output back. If we don't do that, then there won't be a, a shell that we're creating. So let's create a, a shell and let's see if that uh, makes our collisions work a little bit better. Okay, you can see our collisions are working better now, kind of keeping within our uh, our shell, our tube shell that we've created. Um, but one thing, I we don't need this, you know, to be very high res right now. We can just for testing it we want it to run fast um let me increase this radius scale a little bit let's try 0.4 um we want it to be pretty tight around them but we also want to give enough space that uh there's um some breathing room and then max sub steps we can give it another sub step just because these are moving uh, somewhat quickly. And that really helps to um, fill up the, uh, the volume if you add a, an extra sub-step. You can see there's some, we've got some uh, We've got some weird stuff going on with the collisions. Uh, it looks like in terms of some glitchiness that's going on. Um, let's see if we get rid of that. That could be, you know, due to the voxel size as well. And if we were to decrease it, it would, um, we could get a little bit uh, cleaner result. We can see, we can see if, test that by breaking this. So yeah, that looks like that's kind of fixing our issue. 
um, with the glitching and the collisions. Collisions are al always a little finicky. Um, but the next thing that we wanted to do is maybe play with the shape a little bit more. Um, let's see what we can do with turbulence. I think we'll probably want the swirl size to be pretty big. Um, let's set this to five, see what this looks like. Getting some nice turbulence there for sure. Swirl size may be a little bit big. Um, but in the sourcing tab, we can source uh, change the source scale so we get more density being thrown into the simulation. And that'll help, you know, fill everything out. Cool. So, you know, I think the basis of our setup is definitely working. Um, the uh, output tab of the Pyro Solver allows us to convert to VDB and use um, a 16 bit float. And then um, in the terms of the fields to export, the only one we ultimately need is density. And then we can do a VDB convert. Um, VDB class change from FOG to STF. And you can see we now have a STF version of our um, PyroSim. When we run the, ho we can run a little bit higher res version um, for our final test, and then that'll increase the resolution of this. Um, I think we can also do a VDB resample. Um, and we can uh, make it more, um, the vox we can change the voxel size by doing that too. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do that right now, but that's just something to, to know about if you're taking one of these uh, mesh uh, meshes and it's chunky. Um, so the uh, one of the next things that we're going to look at is um, just filling out the, the simulation more. Um, that's kind of our one of our next challenges to to figure out. So yeah, you can see we have this uh, this nice mesh shape being created, and uh, yeah, over over time this will fill in the container more. But we need to have a way to make sure that it uh, that it fills everything in, um, and at first. I was trying to do that with a um, uh, like a VDB growth solution. So kind of putting this um, this result in some solver um, 
Here, let's preview what this mesh will look like. So like putting this in some solver and, you know, ha having it grow to make sure it captures um, the whole uh, the whole container. Um, but that proved to be a little like um, uh, just difficult, I'd say, to get right and also just like kind of computation. It was expensive. Um, so I took a kind of easier route of just using the tube that we've created previously here and using that as a uh, an SDF intersection. So, but yeah, let's I'll hop over to the example that I've cached out so we can kind of see what the what the end result looks like. So same same exact setup um, that we were just talking about, and then we have uh, our pyro solver cached out here for um, three hundred some frames. So same setup we were talking about. Uh, the box size was the default. Um, sourcing we had changed the scale uh turned off the dissipation um changed the buoyancy scale um these are the turbulent settings that i ended up using and yeah that should all be pretty much the same um it looks like there were a lot fewer turns in the helix that I ended up using, so only 1.8. Um, and yeah, this is the radius scale and everything, but pretty much same setup with, you know, just whatever settings that I used when I set it up. Um, some of these other nodes were just tests that I would, what is doing um, that didn't, you know, didn't end up factoring in really. So yeah, you can see we have our same kind of uh, mesh and some issues here, you know, obviously happening and also, you know, not filling in to the, um, to the full extent of the sides. So you can see here, I tried to do a solver approach that I didn't end up using. Um, and so the first step that we ultimately need to do is, uh, create a tube that is the same size as, uh, the one we initially used. So it goes right to the edge of where the simulation's happening. And uh, I just animated this uh, tube to follow along with the, to follow along with the state of the simulation. So the reason this is rotated is because at the, um, at the object level, I rotated it for the framing for the camera. So that's why that's rotated. So um, yeah. That was one thing too. I think in the last video, I tried to start all of this off like in a just doing the whole sim and everything rotated, which is just a bad idea. I everything working straight up and down just made way more sense and was easier. And so after the fact, I just rotated it for the cameras and stuff. Um, so yeah, create that as a VDB and then combine that with the simulation um, as a union. Uh, and we can see that this is not going even to the edge, but that's okay because we're going to do another step that I realized would be helpful. So we have, we have this tube and then we have a second tube that's uh, static, not moving. And this one is also a VDB. So we have our our sim combined with a tube that's trailing behind it. And then we intersect that with this other static tube that we've created. So 
we have our sim that gets combined with this uh, this tube that's filling in everything, just making sure everything's filled in, which we can't see right now. And then everything's being kind of intersected with this uh, base tube that we're using for our whole uh, our whole uh, scene. And then that is getting converted back to polygons. And then um, to do the material change, um, this tube here has a color of black applied to it. And that is transferred to the uh, final mesh using an attribute transfer and a, a, a low distance threshold so that only the outside is black and the inside is white and then blur that out just a little bit so we have a softer edge there um, and then use that color as a as a um, blend uh, the blend color between these two materials um, and yeah the rendering setup was super basic so I just set up some cameras uh, and just a few a few lights and did that material um, that uh, material mix between the the two um, so yeah essentially that is the whole um, the whole effect um, and yeah I think it it looks pretty cool it's a you know it's a good improvement from the uh, from the look of the last one, which was pretty low res and just, you know, doesn't, yeah, doesn't really um, have as much of that kind of dynamic fluid smoke motion. So, yeah, I just, I wanted to revisit this and I realized, you know, like I should probably post an update for this one as well in case anybody else is interested. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one and kind of learned a little bit more about how we can get different looks with pyro like one main thing i would say is is scale like increasing the scale of your scene quite a bit um and yeah some some of the other tips and tricks that we covered are helpful as well but uh yeah let me know if you have questions but otherwise i will look forward to seeing you in the next one and the project files for this will be on patreon um yeah if you want to join me in discord or and or sign up for my newsletter um just you know building up some community for people who are learning 3d so all right i'll see you in the next one bye